the gospel truth with Marlon Wilson. Thank you for joining me on the gospel truth today. It is February 25th, 2019, and I'm excited to have my audience with me. Um, and it's such a blessing to be able to get on here and to be able to proclaim the truth of the gospel while also engaging the culture with Christian truth. And today's show will be a good one. Um, I think it's a much needed discussion. Um, I think it's a much needed discussion surrounding abortion. And just recently, we had a debate concerning abortion. And um, I want to get into this a little bit. But before I do that, I want to encourage my viewers to be able to like and share uh, this, uh, this show, um, if you could, on your page in order to just let everybody know that I am broadcasting live. Um, also, if you could uh, like and share, like and follow the Gospel Truth page. And also on YouTube, you can also subscribe to my YouTube page, The Gospel Truth. Um, so I just got confirmation that I will also be having another guest on by the name of Joel McDermott. And he is a, a big voice in the Reformed Christian, uh, Reformed Christian community. And I'm very excited to have him on. Um, and I, I'm very, very, very excited to be able to get him on air. We've been talking the last couple of days and he's finally uh, decided to come on. So, but he won't be on until towards the middle end of April. Um, so um, we have a lot of people coming on. Uh, Mike Lacona will be joining me, who is one of the primary voices or of uh, the evidence for the resurrection. Um, I have Andrew Rappaport on with me, who is also a strong voice in the Christian community. And we'll be discussing religious pluralism and also, I'll be having um, a ministry called One Accord Ministry, um, and they just started a new podcast. There's three of them, and they will be coming on as well here March 2nd at 1 p.m. to be able to um, uh, discuss uh, religious, and, uh, the political, and racial divide within the, the church. Um, so I wanted to get on here, and I wanted to talk about abortion continuously. It seems like abortion is a repetitive thing on my show and not only my show but other shows as well christian orientated shows and it's, it's become a real big issue um well it's been an issue but it's become a more polarizing issue with all the um the late term th th third trimester abortions uh, abortion laws that are coming into play in these different states um so it's been a real big deal um so recently we you know there's been a lot of uh talk about a debate that's, that happened um, between Dr. Willie Parker and um, and Dr. Sorry and Dr. Mike Adams, um, who is it was the, the debate was broadcast by uh, Summit Ministries. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, go ahead Google them. They are they 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 do a lot of apologetic work and cr defending the Christian faith work, um, and so the whole goal is to you know. We need to be able to have a proper response to the to the argument of abortion, um, and it, while while you know the, I think the the core concept is is that the personhood of the the baby that's in the womb, um, we either going to define that baby as a person, and regardless if it's out of the womb or not, or we're we going to um, categorize it only as a person once it exits the womb. I think that's the big problem, and if we don't have a way of deciphering that from a Christian perspective, uh, then we can fall to the whims of this secular world that we live in, and we don't want to do that. We want to have a proper response to argumentation, and that is the goal of this show, is not only to um, talk about social issues outside of the church, but to equip the believer with the ability to defend the faith against those who are argue, who argue against the faith and those things we stand against. Um, so I want to give a, a brief review of those who who participated in the debate. So we started with Dr. Willie Parker. Dr. Willie Parker is an OBGYN specializing in abortions and reproductive justice advocate. He is a graduate from Brea College in Kentucky and holds a degree from University of Iowa College of Medicine. 
the, Har the Harvard School of Public Health, the University of uh, Cincinnati, and University of Michigan. He's board certified in obstetrics and gyne uh, gynecology and trained in preventive medicine and, and uh, epidemiology through the Centers of Disease Control. Dr. Parker currently provides abortion care for women in Alabama, Mississippi, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Illinois, and is a former medical director of Planned Parenthood Metropolitan, Washington, D.C. He is a physician plaintiff in a federal law lawsuit preventing closure of Mississippi's only abortion clinic, and a case currently requests a hearing by the U.S. Supreme Court. His work includes a focus on violence against women, sexual assault prevention, and reproductive health rights through advocacy, provision, and contraceptive and abortion services in, in, uh, in men's reproductive health. And here's a quote from Dr. Willie Parker. Uh, he quotes, I believe that as an abortion provider, I am doing God's work. Parker writes in, the, in New Memorial Life Works, I am protecting women's rights their human right to decide their future for themselves and to live their lives as they see fit. Um, and so you see a little bit of the perspective upon which Willie Parker is coming from. He believes that he's doing God's work and providing the right for women to be able to abort their children. And obviously from a Christian perspective, a true Christian perspective, that is an incorrect assertion. Um, by allowing a woman to have the right to murder a child, uh, is not doing God's work. That is actually contrary to the idea of what God will call us to do. Um, so the also per, the other participant that's in the debate was Dr. Mike Adams. Uh, Dr. Mike Adams is born in Columbus, Mississippi, October 3rd, is an American conservative political columnist, writer, author, and professor of, of, at University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Uh, hailing from Clear Lake, Texas, Adams attained an associate's degree in psychology, from San Jacinto College in Pasadena, Texas. He, he then transferred to Mississippi State University where he has a brother of Sigma Chi to finish his BA. He remained at Mississippi State to obtain his master's in psychology followed by his doctorate in criminology. In 1993, hired uh, University of North Carolina, Washington, uh, Wilmington, sorry, hired Adams to teach in a criminal justice program. Adams won the faculty member of the year in 1998 and again in 2000. Um, Adam has written several hundred articles as political conservative columnists, such as publications as uh, the, uh, the Town Hall on the Daily Wire. So, so that's a, just a little bit of background on the two participants of this debate. So I'm not going to go into the full-blown debate. If I did, we would be here forever because it was a two-hour debate, and I don't want to go through the full-blown deal. Um, this show is only going to try to be the last about an hour. But what I'm going to do... Excuse me. I do want to go through the cross-examination portion of this debate just to give you some back and forth argumentations from both parties. And I will be stopping intermittently throughout the, the throughout the broadcast, uh, throughout the, uh, the, the cross-examination to chime in on some thoughts or to give some clarification where there needs to be clarification given. Um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into this. And to. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into this and get this party on the road. Now, uh, Seattle has some uh, particular uh, significance for me for lots of reasons. Um, I have got a lot of family here, some of whom are here in the audience tonight. Um, I also had my... Okay, so you see Dr. Willie Parker, the, the, the individual, the guy on the right, um, and... Um, the lady that's speaking right now, she's a comedian. Um, I'm not too familiar with her, but that's not the primary emphasis of the show, so I'm not too concerned about it. But, but this is this. She she's a comedian, and watch the reaction once she announces that they had that she had an abortion. First abortion at the Seattle Planned Parenthood. Yay! Notice I said first, I said first, and I don't want Seattle, I don't want you guys to feel insecure. It was my best one. <laughs> Heads and tails above the rest. If I could Yelp review it. And you know, that's not a joking matter. You know, you know, we have these jokes and these this clownery about the idea of abortion. Um, and this just goes to show that they do not see 
the human being that's in the womb as a person. And as we go through this, this cross-examination, that would be a primary emphasis of the cross-examination. Is the human being a person or is it is it a person that has pers is, does it, is it given the, the, the personage that's desired that's should, that it should have either if it's in the room or not or is it just becoming a person once you exit the room and and um it's a human being but it's not a person it's not giving that quality uh of uh, of of um it's not giving the 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 quality or the attributes of someone who is divinely and, and made in the image of God um so let's check out let's check it out well the individual you saw laughing and clapping about the intentional killing of innocent human beings was dr willie parker and the first question is pretty natural dr parker is intentionally killing innocent human beings really funny do i get the answer so this yes i'm okay. sorry okay. yes okay. please yeah. yeah um i think you just asked me a non-question uh you should have asked me what I was clapping and laughing at. And what I was clapping and laughing at was Martha Plimpton, who's a comedian. And I was clapping and laughing at her boldness to use her chosen craft to reject stigma and shame around women who have abortion. Her personal decision to disclose that she'd had an abortion and to turn it into a joke was a form for her of pushing back on the notions that women who have abortions and if the statistics are appropriate in this room there are one in four women in this room have had an abortion there are women here who've had abortions whether they clap about it or not or whether they speak about it or not but most of the women who've had abortions often live in the cloud of stigma and shame and uh i was clapping at a woman uh who had made a decision in her life that was personal that was her right to do so felt empowered enough to push back and to empower other women perhaps to reject stigma and shame. And so, yes, it was funny that uh, this woman, under the direct scrutiny, knowing that she's a public figure and that this would be out it. there, yeah. that she uh, that. found power to claim her own life experience. Okay. So according to Willie Parker, um, it's okay to laugh at the fact of having an abortion because it removes the stigma and shame that comes along with the abortion. Well, there is shame in it. There's shame, absolute 100% shame because you're killing a baby that's made in the image of God. You're killing a human being that's made in the image of God. And to, to argue that the reason she's laughing is because she's trying to fight off the stigmatization or the shame that comes along with it. Well, there's no laughing matter about that. Um, so this whole idea is, is absolutely ridiculous. Um, to be able to laugh off this idea. And Willie Parker laughed right along with her. And this shows the callous hearts and the hard hearts of a sinful, sinful, sinful uh, generation, a sinful world that we live in, uh, where they will just laugh and joke and, and, and don't take serious the idea and the sanctity of life that God has given to each and every human being. Um, because a baby is less developed or doesn't show that doesn't have the the same physical attributes or the cognizant uh, abilities as a full grown human being, they are less valuable and less seen, uh, not seen as human in the same regard as someone who is outside of the room who has full development. Um, that argument goes all over the plat, all over the a, a full blown demographic. Um, but yeah, not to get too far ahead of myself. Let's continue. Okay, next question. Um, <clears throat> uh, don't use this timer. Please, please hold. You can clap at the end. Thank you, you. You complained that I only went to uh, one source of information for scientifically describing abortions. Let's go to another. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy, who consistently rules in favor of upholding the major provisions of Roe versus Wade, described DNA abortions this way. The fetus in many cases dies just as a human adult or child would. It bleeds to death as it is torn limb from limb. The fetus can be alive at the beginning of the dismemberment process and can survive for a time while its limbs are being torn off. My question is, do you feel the slightest bit of sympathy for the human beings that you subject to this procedure? Uh, and you see Dr. Adams, what he's doing, he's just revealing the 
the humanity aspect of it. He's going to go into this cross-examination further and further, and he's going to transition to a point where Willie Parker is going to have to come to the conclusion that he is not only, he's killing humans. Um, and, and, that, and this is, you see the step-by-step -step progression that Adam is taking in order to essentially trap Dr. Willie Parker into a corner to where he has to fully admit that he's killing humans. First of all, Dr. Ken, uh, Justice Kennedy is not a physician, and uh, what he described as an abortion procedure uh, was not an accurate description. There is dismemberment involved, uh, but I am no more or less sympathetic to the process that I'm doing than I am to. And you see how he just rejects what Dr. I guess I remember the guy's name that he referring to who made the statement. But the idea that uh, he's not a doctor, so he basically doesn't know what he's talking about in the, OB, in, the, in the abortion procedure. Well, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a doctor to know what you're talking about. The fact is, is that babies are ripped limb from limb inside the womb. That's a fact. And it would be nice of Willie Parker to just go ahead and, exp and, 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 and just admit that. The baby is ripped womb from womb and uh, limb from limb, and he bleeds out, and the baby bleeds out. The baby intestines are ripped out, things like that, you know. So this idea that uh, because he's, uh, he doesn't know the procedure, he's not a doctor, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, fundamentally, ba it's basic. That's logic. I don't have to be a doctor in order to be able to see that. So it would be nice for him to just come straight up like, yeah, he's right. You know, it's limb from limb. And the baby is it bleeds to death. The woman that I'm doing it for. When I do an abortion, I am clear what she has asked me to do for her. I'm clear that she's asked me to remove a fetus from her. I'm clear that in your terms, it is intentional killing of a fetus. And but because it is. And mind you, fetus actually means the, the Latin word for fetus actually means baby. So they use fetus, the word term fetus, as if fetus doesn't mean baby or doesn't mean it means something other than a baby. Like by using fetus, it takes away the it's a scientific term or a term to use for early stages of a child a baby in the womb but the the actual meaning if you look it up it actually means baby so you know you'll see this by these guys who push abortion abortion they will do whatever they can to try to remove the personage the humanity of the child in order to try to in order to try to um uh, uh, uh try to help their argument in support of what they desire to do you can't remove the humanity. So by using fetus, you're actually explaining, you're saying, yeah, that's a baby. Not uh, a person. That is why if you were to call uh, the police on a day that I'm doing abortions, they won't come because abortion is not murder. So I have sympathy for... And you see how Dr. Willie Parker throws the law in there. He tries to throw the law of the land in there, you know, and says that because in the, the law of the land... It's not abortion. Therefore, you won't see the police coming because it's not murder. Well, the whole idea behind the law of the land, just because it's law doesn't make it right. And I think that's the problem with many people who argue for abortion or any other laws for that matter of this land. Because it's a law behind it does not make it right. We have to remember that during the time of civil rights movement, that it was a law that blacks could not use white bathrooms. It was a law that whites, uh, blacks could not use white water fountains. And remember, during the time of Germany, it was a law within a German, uh, the German regime, uh, Hitler Germany regime, that Jews were to be killed. Jews were, were to be rounded up, thrown into concentration camps, and killed. Um, that was a law. So because something is law does not make it right. And we clearly see the same thing here. Because it's law that abortion is, is legal, does not make it right. It is still evil to do because once again, you're killing a human being. You're not killing, you're not cutting your toenails. It's not, it's not something that's simplistic like that. You're not, you know, you're not uh, cleaning your hands of the old skin cells. You're actually killing a life. You're actually taking a life. And so, and according to God's law, which is su which supersedes the law of the land, upon which the moral argument stands, um, everything you know, if you have moral objectivity, then obviously there has to be a moral lawgiver. There are things that are absolutely bad. There are things that are absolutely bad, regardless of what the law of the land says. And God proclaims that murder is one of them. That is an absolute moral law that stands regardless of what your land says. Your law, your, the law of the land says, it is a pillar of God's character and nature.
nature. And when we abort, when we kill children, we are defiling God's uh, uh, image. We are defiling it because human beings, no matter what stage they're in, in the process of birth, conception, and throughout the whole nine months of uh, uh, progression until birth happens, um, it doesn't matter. We are all made in the image of God. This is just not some clump of skin cells that you're just getting rid of. It is absolutely a human being in that womb. And the moral argument stands there because murder, murder is absolutely wrong in any degree. The person that I need to have sympathy for and empathy and compassion, and that is the woman for whom I'm doing uh, the procedure. If I uh, okay. had moral misgivings about what I was, what, I what I was doing, it would, it would be uh, difficult for me to do it. I understand. And see, that, and that's the decay of the heart. You know, Willie Parker said he does not have any moral dilemmas uh, about killing a baby in the womb. He has no moral, moral dilemma. All his concern is is with helping the woman. And, and you forget that the baby, very early in, in the stages of uh, being developed in the womb, began to have arms and legs. And it, it had a heartbeat immediately. And you start seeing baby, the, the brain growth pretty much two weeks into um, uh, conception. You know, after being conceived two weeks into it, to the development of the child, you see brain activity. You see a heartbeat. You see all these ideas that points to an actual human life in the womb of a child, in the womb of a, a, a woman. So to argue that you're not concerned about the baby in a womb, but you're more concerned about the woman, or you have no moral dilemmas, well, you need to readdress that, Dr. Willie Parker, because you're actually killing a life in the baby, a life in the womb. That's just a simple fact of the matter. Okay, well, then, if, if that, okay, my, my first one wasn't accurate, my second one's not accurate, let's keep trying. Um, let's go to abortion Dr. Warren Hearn, who has written the book Abortion Practice. Let's see what he has to say. On page 142 of his book, uh, he describes doing a DNA abortion in which he says, as the skull is grasped, a sensation that it is collapsing is almost always accompanied by the expulsion of white brain matter from the skull. Is that accurate? That is accurate. That is accurate. Okay. And you perform DNA procedures. I do. And once again, you see what Dr. Adam is doing, right? He is slowly, progressively putting him in a corner. He's blocking Dr. Willie Parker into a corner to finally admit that he is killing human beings. Let's check it out. Okay. So when you crush a human skull, it's not really gray matter. It's white brain matter that oozes out. What's your point? No, I'm asking you a question. Is, is the brain matter that oozes out when you crush a human and you can see the body language of Willie Parker he scratches his face and everything you see his body language and you can see how he's beginning to fidget a little bit because he realizes that Dr. Adam has blocked him into a corner now so he's getting to the point where there's no denying that he's killing a human life you know you can't delineate and say oh it's not a human life it's not a person because of the stages of development within the womb it is, you know, he has to admit, and he will, he has to admit that he's killing a human being. Skull white. What does it matter? What does it matter? Yes, what does it matter? <laughs> I, I, I get you're going for theatrics and... Uh... and you, know, he, you know, he's going for theatrics, he's getting all defensive and everything, but, yeah. Uh, I'm you going made your for, point. I, I am going for medical accuracy okay. because you said I wasn't. So I went to an abortion manual. That's okay. what I did. So I responded to your criticism. You've described what I do. So what is your point? My point is that it intentionally kills an innocent human being. Would you concede the point? It, 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 I started my, my, my first concession was to your first two syllogisms, okay. that abortion uh, kills a human being. It is and there you have it. Abortion kills a human being. But the callousness of the heart of this individual and most people who, who, who say abortion is okay, you see the callous of the heart uh, and the, the hardness of the heart and the sinful nature that's full blown within Dr. Willie Parker. Um, uh, and then he calls himself a Christian, which is interesting. But uh, you see the callousness and the, 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 the lack of empathy there for the human being. It's just a matter of like, oh yeah, you know, it's nothing. The intentional disruption of a pregnancy that kills a human being. 
I, I made the distinction and why, that's why I asked you to be more precise in your definition okay. of why you say abortion kills a human being, but you've never said abortion kills a person. Okay, well, you... And you see that? You see how you try to make the difference? Well, I conceded that, yeah, it kills human beings, but you never made the concession. You never, you never said person, though. You never said person, but I admitted that a human being. My first question, Dr. Willie, what's the difference? There is no difference. This is, once again, somebody who's pro-abortion, somebody who doesn't have empathy for the child, who doesn't understand that people are all human beings are made in the image of God, whether in the room or not. You know, this is, this is the problem with individuals that think like this because now he, 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 he wants to differentiate. Ah, oh, human being, a person. No, it doesn't matter. A person is a human being. A human being is a person. Stop trying to candy coat it and to gloss over it to protect your, your protect yourself. You can protect your conscience. You know, the Bible says that your, your conscience can become seared because of your sin. And we see that clearly in Dr. Willie Parker. You know, we got to pray that God convicts his heart of his sin and that he repents because it's, it's, it's tough right now for him. You can ask me about that when you ask questions. Just one, one final question. How many innocent human beings have you intentionally killed in your life's work? I love this question. I love the fact that he just, you know these questions that Dr. Adams is asking. He's asking very simplistic, not too convoluted questions. They're not filled, they're not filled with big scientific words. They're, they're very practical in nature. These questions are designed to really to convict Dr. Willie Parker and those who pro, who profess pro-choice in the fact that they're killing human beings and he's trying, Dr. Dr. Adams is attempting to really infiltrate the heart of Dr. Willie Parker. He wants him to understand the fact that he has killed thousands upon thousands of babies. I cannot remember the number exactly. I remember watching Dr. Willie Parker on a show just, on a show that's uh, that's that's um, hosted by Jesse Lee Peterson um, and where Dr. Willie Parker went on there and he gave a number of how many abortions he probably did. Um, and it is horrific. You know, the fact that Dr. Willie Parker has done so many abortions and the fact that his heart is so callous and there is no sense of, of, of hurt or pain or empathy or care in the world for the things that he's doing. Um, and I just want to say to all those who do profess uh, pro-choice, think about what's going on before you profess such a position. Take yourself out of the picture, what fits you best, and look at the child. You know, this is exactly why I am an advocate for uh, women who may have conceived a child through rape. I am totally for the baby being born. Um, that's because the woman... While rape is an absolutely horrific thing and it's something that stays with you for life and it's a long, long road of recovery, I'm not putting any joking man, I'm not doubting the, the, the foulness of it, but at the end of the day, it is not the baby's fault. The baby did not ask to be conceived. So this is why I'm an advocate for women who might have conceived because of a rape um, to have the baby, if they choose to give, uh, uh, if they choose to give the baby up for adoption, uh, so be it. But if they choose to keep the baby, so be it. The whole idea is to ensure that the baby is safe. The baby comes out the womb, and if the mother wants to give the baby up for adoption, that is a blessing. Um, another, you know, the adoption, the, the the foster children program in this country is a different story, is a different show, but. There are plenty of people who desire to have children and they can't conceive. God has not opened the womb of that child, of that woman. So they can't conceive a child. And there's plenty of married people who are willing to adopt. There are plenty of people who have children already who are willing to adopt. So, you know, in the situation of someone who might have been raped or anything like that and conceived in that nature, you know, there are people out there who are willing to bring your child in. Um, and... And, and you know, and that's, and that's the overall goal as a Christian, as a believer in Christ, is to is to be able to comfort those who are hurting, to be able to give hope to those who don't, who feel that they don't have hope, and that's because the joy and hope that Christ has put in our hearts.
to share with others. So, and so that's the whole idea uh, behind my feelings, my my thoughts on someone who might have been raped and conceived in that in that way. But once again, this debate is the the cross examination. Dr. Adams is blocking Dr. Willie Parker into a corner. He's just recently admitted that he's killing human beings, and that uh, Willie Willie Parker is now trying to defend himself, saying that oh, it's not a person. It's but it's a human being, but it's not a person. Try to cover his lack of empathy. I don't know. I don't You've measure lost my count. work. By, I don't. Uh, You've lost I don't, count. Uh, and you see, Dr. Adams is just playing this. Thing. You lost count, brother. That's how many abortions he's probably done, people. This is this is a man who, who for a living, for a living. He's an OBGYN, but part of his lifestyle is to rip babies out the womb. That's a part of his his. That's a part of his job criteria. Is to do it, and, and he's grown numb to it. When you forget, like, you know, someone, someone who's madly in love with their wife, right? You know, they're madly in love. They start count. They, they tend to start trying to count the days, you know, of marriage and everything. They can remember the anniversaries and the birthdays. They don't forget those things because it's intimate. It's intimate to them. But as soon as someone who's madly in love falls out of love with his wife. Before I don't care for his children, they tend to forget those things. They don't care for those things anymore. And this is what we see in Dr. Willie Parker. His heart is so seared with his sin that he don't even know the number no more. It's just routine to him. It's like putting on socks now. It's like every day you put on socks, you know. Every day you eat breakfast. You have a cup of coffee, you know. So everything is just seared on him now. There is no, he doesn't even know the number because he's done so many. It's really, really a bad place to be. If it's a million, 10, what's a 20,000, 20, 30, 000? what's the difference? What's and you see the sarcastic, 20,000, 20,000. You know, the sarcastic nature that he's responding. It's 20,000, what's the difference? You know, just that cold, just hard heart. That's what that is, that cold, hard heart nature. And uh, what is, what's the, who cares? I could have killed 10,000, who cares? Well, you kill human beings, that's why. The difference yes, between 20,000 and 30,000, yeah, no. 10,000 dead human beings. Yeah, and Dr. Adams said, that's the difference. You kill 10,000 more people, clown. 10,000 more. We're uproar about what happened to the Jews in, in Nazi Germany. We have flip our lids over that story. But it's unfortunate that we see individuals in today's world that do not flip their lid over these abortions. Over a million, I think over a million something abortions happen every year in America alone. That's not talking about over in Europe or any other country or nation. That's just America alone. Over a million abortions happen every year in our country. But there seems to be no outrage. And also those individuals who are outraged about abortions in the third trimester, but they have no care for the abortions in the second and the first trimester, shut up. Because you guys aren't helping the cause. You guys aren't helping the cause if you're for a baby to get aborted in the first two weeks. You know, personally, I'm starting to drive away from pro-life. Pro I'm, I'm starting to get the term abolitionist. That's where we should be as believers in Christ. It shouldn't be trying to abolish the third trimester abortion or the second trimester. We should be trying to ab abolish abortion everything. Everything. Unless the fetus is already dead in the womb. Or there's certain procedures where the, the death of the fetus is imminent and the baby might not be dead yet, but the death of the fetus is imminent. And if the baby dies, it can cause death to the woman. In those two cases, the baby is already, the fetus, the baby is already dead and the death of a fetus or a baby is imminent. Those are the only two reasons I would say abortion is okay. But any other reason, there is no reason, and we should be all outraged at the fact that we're killing human life and there's no care in the world, and you got doctors like Willie Parker, whose heart is so calloused and so hard that he doesn't give a care in the world, he doesn't give a dog on about these, about these babies. And he's trying to be, he called himself a Christian, and he think he's helping the woman, he's being all careful and loving towards the women. You're actually treating women as a victim. You probably sit up there coercing women to get abortions. So you're not helpful. You're not Christian. Stop calling yourself that. You're not doing God's work. You're an enemy of God. You're hostile towards God. Let's continue. That's the difference. Okay. So that's more, that's more, more culpable than killing one person. Uh, 
more if I if I was killing people, if I was committing murder, I wouldn't have gotten to do ten thousand. Someone would have called the police and they would have. Uh, Our time is up. <laughs> and you see, see the time is up, so he didn't get to finish his statement. But Dr. Willie Parker was about to say, well, because of the law of the land, if I kill somebody who's in, in an audience, he pointed it to the audience. If I kill somebody, oh yeah, I'm liable because that's the law of the land. But abortion, because it's not the law of the land, it's not liable. It's not liable because the law of the land says so. Once again, I repeat, because a law is in the land does not make it right. Remember, not too long ago, in this country, the Americas, in the United States of America, there was a law that said black folks could not use white folks' water fountain. There was a law that said black folks could not go to colleges or schools that was for white people. That was law. That was law. Was it right? No, it was not right. It's not right. So anybody who wants to argue about this and say, because of the law of the land says I can do it, you're going up the creek without a paddle. You're about to get swarmed and fall down a waterfall. You don't have a proper argument. Because something's law of the land does not make it right. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Addison. Thank you, Dr. Parker, for responding. Okay. We are now going to turn the seven minutes over to yeah. you to ask questions to Dr. Addison. Yeah. Your time begins yeah. now. Dr. Adams, uh, as I cited, uh, it's unclear to me when you say you, I didn't hear you, you say you used person, you used human being, and what, if you use person, you're using person and human being interchangeably. All of the laws, uh, all the rights and privileges that we have in this country are based on personhood, and personhood is established at birth. Uh, that's not simply a legal dis definition. The legal the morality behind the legality is related to the law behind the law or the uh, code upon which it is based. That is why when we've had legal situations like slavery, when people dug deeper and, and the moral assessment of the law uh, failed the test, slavery was overturned. Mm -hmm. In the same regard, the moral test around whether or not abortion should be legal was determined by the same way. And it was based on personhood mm -hmm. and the compelling interest that the state has in protecting the personhood of a woman and that that falls short when it comes to the pregnancy that she's carrying. So help me to understand by your definition uh, why, you, why you use human being and person interchangeably when yeah. um, the law does not uh, and many religious traditions uh, and even Christianity was absent on that other than Catholicism, but all of a sudden now uh, personhood begins at conception. Okay. Uh, I do reject the distinction between human being and person. And what, and, and what uh, Willie Parker was referring to, the Catholic Church, he might have been pointing to Augustine. Augustine... Um, uh, made a statement, I'm trying to remember the actual quote, but Augustine made a statement of some realm that um, about the stages of birth or something like that. Um, and I can't remember exactly, but I think that's what he's referring to. Um, and Dr. Adams is about to go into his re re uh, question, uh, respond to his question and that he differentiate, you know, he, he refuses to make differentiations between person and human. And this is where Willie Parker is going to try to argue that persons and humans are different. And here's one reason I do it. The Dred Scott versus Sanford case was... Now, just to give you some kind of background on the Dred, Dredford and, and Sand Scott, uh, I believe that's right, uh, Dred Scott, I'm sorry, and Stan Sanford case, it was a case basically during the 1800s where um, a slave by the name of Sanford, or Dred Scott, I believe, um, uh, I believe his name is Dred Scott, um, be, was, he was a slave, and his slave owner moved to a free state, right? And obviously he took his slaves, and, and he took Sanford and his family with him. Um, so Sanford... Um, desired uh, desired freedom because he went to a free state but the problem is is that they did not recognize him as a free slave because he was never a citizen of that state so what Sanford did he filed a lawsuit or he found he argued that he should have been freed 
from it, from, from being a slave, should become a free slave. And what they argue was that because black people were not seen as humans or had a personage that Dr. Adams is about to argue, they were let, they were not seen, they were seen less than human. You know, um, if you know, black folks were almost seen as cattle um, instead of uh, human beings. So they argued from that point and decided to say, hey, no, because you were not seen as a human being and because you were not a free state or a citizen of free state, you were, uh, you're not able to gain freedom because he wasn't seen as that, you know. Um, so the, 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 the problem is, is that the same nature of argumentation is being used against the, the, the baby in saying that, hey, the, pers the person and the human are different. And Adam is saying, no, there is no difference. They're one and the same. One of uh, uh, many tragic, wrongly decided uh, Supreme Court cases in American history. And what that case did was to distinguish between a human being in a biological sense and a person in a philosophical sense. What it said is that some human beings don't measure up. And it conferred upon some human beings a right to define other human beings out of personhood. And it is that logic that caused slavery to be perpetuated and inequality to be perpetuated. And that's why I reject that distinction. Amen. And that's a proper reason to reject that statement because if we are not understanding that all human beings are made in the image of God, they have been created in the image of God, then the humanity or the personage is there. There is no difference between humanity and personage. All humans were made in the image of God and they were made to have the freedoms, the right to life and liberty. Um, so for Willie Parker to differentiate and other people to differentiate and say, well, there's a difference because of the stages, you're being discriminatory. And these are the same individuals who scream social justice and all this stuff and that there's no rights for certain individuals. Well, what about the right of the, hum the human in the womb? What about the right of the human in the womb? Don't they have a right to? Shouldn't they have a right to life? And not be subjected to the bias, secular, scientific world that says that a baby is not a baby or a person until a baby comes out the womb? What about hours before the baby comes out the womb? Is that a person? Do they have to have a social security number in order to become a person? Do they have to have a birth certificate in order to become a person? I don't think they do, especially according to God's word. All humans are made in his image. We're all, we're all giving the, 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 the quality and we're all valuable. And I think that's what we're forgetting here. We're all valuable. We're all humans. That, and, uh, why, why, why did the Dred Scott case not hold with regard to the Roe v. Wade case? If that logic, if that was to extend into the uterus, why was Dred Scott not relevant during the Roe v. Wade decision? Oh, that's actually very simple because they denied altogether that we knew about the humanity of the unborn. That's why, if you read the decision. Well, I did, I, I, and I have. And well, they say that. They, well. They said something in Roe that they didn't say in Dred which is that we are agnostic on the question of whether we have a human being. Dredd didn't say that. They said they're agnostic about whether it is a person. But I don't want to argue with you that about, but the question, again, yeah. based on that. Yeah, of course, you don't want, of course you don't want to argue because Adams know his stuff. And you're back into a corner once again. You don't even know what you're talking about, doctor. That with the personhood of a woman, when does she lose that? She doesn't. Okay. So what does it mean to be a person? Well, again, once you're a human, you know, I, you know, I did this in my opening presentation. I was very clear about no, this. What is I said, a person? once you are biologically a human, you have full rights of personhood. Okay, so I have equated the two. 
everyone's in from the point of conception. And what is your standard for that? What, what, is, your, what is your source? What is, your, uh, what is that? Is the that a religious of embryology understanding? The establishes that we are distinct, living, and whole human beings from the point of This is where I have a problem with Adam's argument, and I understand that he doesn't want to go Bible thumping on the guy, but I probably would have argued from a position of biblical authority from this, this point. Um, instead of I, I arguing from a scientific a science book, because Dr. Willie Parker is going to argue back, he's going to use the same evidence to argue back. Because, quite frankly, Dr. Adams is not a doctor. He's a doctor, no, not a yes, he's a doctor. I just call him Dr. Adams. But he's not a doctor. He's a doctor, but he's not a gynecologist. So, Willie Parker is probably more knowledgeable, fundamentally knowledgeable in these areas than Dr. Adams is. So, this is probably the only point of his. Uh, cross-examination that I have a problem with Adam's argument. I feel that he should have smashed him with the Bible just now. He should have killed him right there with the Bible, with the scriptures. And this is the thing, as a Christian, remember, as a Christian, we cannot put down our sword. We have to keep our sword. And the sword is the word of God. That is the thing that's going to change hearts. And I'm not saying that Adam's goal was not to change hearts and Adam's goal was not to preach the gospel, I'm not saying anything of that nature, but I feel that Adams had a great opportunity because Willie Parker asked, what, upon what authority are you making these claims? And as a believer, all our authority is ma of making these claims is not based on our academia, it's not based on our experience in life, it's based on the authority and word of God. That's where he gains his authority because there is no authority above God. There's no authority above him. He makes the standard moral laws he makes the rules. So if God says that, and, and mind you, Willie Parker calls himself a Christian. He calls himself a Christian. And if that's the case, then he needs to submit. But he obviously isn't. But still, you still don't want to abandon the word of God. That is our weapon when we come, when we come against this stuff. I've never seen right. uh, uh, embryology text. There's nowhere in more, which was a where it says embryology texts do not talk about persons. That's not what I said. You said you establish personhood based on the embryo, on the science. Well, I said once you're a human, you have the full rights of personhood. I refuse to make a legal distinction. Well, why do you refuse, Adam? That would be, you know, once again, why do you refuse? And my response would be because the word of God says differently. And because the word of God is authority. It's authority over, uh, over embryology. Any, any text that says with, with embryo development, any science, t science uh, classes that talks about um, uh, OBGYN classes or texts, textbooks. Because the Bible says so. That's why. And Dr. Willie Parker said exactly that. He, you know, he went on Adam and said, you know, and he's just showing that he's more of an expert than Adam in his field. And Adam should have brought the Bible into play. He should have brought it right here. Remember, as a believer, our goal is not to simply argue with secular ideas. Our goal is to win people over to Christ. That is the goal. The Word of God sears heart, cuts hearts to the deep parts of the soul. It cuts down to the marrow. That, was the, that is what the Word of God does. So he should have used it there. Okay. Well. Clear? What's clear is that uh, everybody's entitled to their own opinion and nobody and you see that everybody's entitled to their own opinion and and nobody is you know nobody has any authority everybody's entitled to their own opinion you see, and, and that's the problem everybody's entitled to their own opinion we're not talking about opinion here we're talking about the authority standard of the word of God we're not talking about opinions here there's no opinions when it comes to the absolute authority of the word of God what does the word of God say about murder what does the word of God say about the baby? What does the word of God say about all these issues that we see in this world? That's how the Christian should approach everything. Absolutely everything. Filter the world through the scriptures and stop playing these games with these secular individuals who do not hold the word of God in authority. It's clear that Willie Parker views embryo textbooks on embryology at a higher regard than the scriptures, but yet he calls himself a Christian. Interesting enough.
as entitled to their own facts or that's their why I go to the science of embryology okay that's why I it's, went you, and I went. you you are parsing the science of em embryology and, and nowhere in the science of embryology in the text does it talk about the whole spectrum of embryologic development does not talk about personhood because personhood is not a scientific definition right right so right. how can you use scientific data to establish a definition that's not rooted in science. I'm not doing that. I'm using but embryology your... to establish that the unborn is human. I and never. I'm saying that every human has full rights. Of did, did I not I say don't that distinction. that 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 every fetus, every conceptus is a human because women don't give birth to puppies, okay. right? Yeah. But stages of development matter. And you see that, and this is where Adams got himself in trouble. He should have used the Bible. Once again, I keep reiterating, he should have used the biblical text in order to refute this man. Because once again, Adam, Dr. Adams, why he is a doctor, he has an education. He's not a he's not a gynecologist. And this is where you're 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 standing on Willie Grounds, Willie Parker's ground now. You're right where he wants you to be. Now he just explained to you that, yeah, the embryo the, the embryo or the fetus or the baby throughout all stages is human. He's not denying that, but what he is is denying the personage, the person. So how do we get around this, uh, Dr. Adams? How do we get around this? We have to be able to use the scriptural text. I didn't hear him use any scriptural text in, in, in the Bible, uh, any scriptural text in his argument. And he is a Christian. I didn't hear him use any Christ, uh, biblical text in his, in, his, in, his, in his debate. And that's the problem. You should always use the word of God in these type of uh, engagements when a Christian is engaging someone who is not a believer in Christ. That's the problem. You should have beat them with the Bible right there. That, there lies the question about, mm -hmm. you talk about moral weight and the, the appropriateness of decisions and what happens. And the question is whether or not uh, the moral weight of a fetus or a pregnancy is the same as a woman. You say it is. So... If there's a fetus that is an anencephalic, non-viable, uh, should a woman have the right to end that pregnancy? I believe that a woman should have a right to end a pregnancy when it threatens her life. Because the, the fetus and uh, the woman both have a right to life. And let me give you a good example of that. A good example is an ectopic pregnancy. When an ectopic pregnancy, that's a situation where, uh, you know, the fetus obviously begins to form in the fallopian tube. It's outside of the uterus. And if that pregnancy continues, it will burst that fallopian tube. I know this And not well. only will the fetus die, but the woman will die. So these, this is very early stages in pregnancy that Dr. Adams is referring to saying, like, that is the only way that abortion will be considered is that the baby begin to develop in a fallopian tube and burst and kill the woman. That's obviously a, a, a circumstance where abortion is probably okay because the baby is going to die anyway and if we don't take care of this the baby the woman will die also death is imminent death is there it's at the front door there's no way around it the baby begins to develop in the in the fallopian tube if it ruptures it will kill the woman and it will certainly kill the baby regardless if it ruptures or not because the baby cannot develop in the fallopian tube so yeah die as well Thank you. So in a situation like that, we would remove it. But you notice that is not intentionally killing an innocent human being in that situation because the death is not intentional. It is foreseeable. And you have to understand in that situation, it's not the malice of the abortion doctor that produces the death of the fetus. It is an underlying physical pathology, which is the but-for causation. And one final question for you. Who should decide when women have have reasons that are legitimate for them to end their pregnancy? Well, I believe that Doe versus Bolton was wrongly decided. And uh, I, I believe in, in situations like that, health should have been something narrower to include a life exception. And so that health is established by a trained health care provider, a woman and her health care provider, right? Well, sure, sure. So then that would mean spaces where people try to decide whether or not a woman has a legitimate reason uh, would be overstepping bounds, right? Uh, they would be able to make a decision. A doctor certainly would be able to make a decision that there's an ectopic pregnancy that threatens the life of the woman, and the woman would have a natural right to end the pregnancy. So an ectopic pregnancy is the only reason a woman should be able to end the pregnancy? Uh, there could be other examples where the life is threatened. Okay, that was a great final question. Thank you both so much for that. We are
All right, so that concludes the debate, um, the cross-examination of the debate. So, yeah, I mean, we see the, this is, you know, Dr. Willie Point is a very educated man. He's got his doctorate and all that good stuff, and we see some of the strongest arguments for abortion. You know, pro-abortion is that the person, that the baby is not considered a person until he or she comes out of the womb. And once again, it is up to the believer in Christ to be able to defend against such nonsensical ideas, to be able to defend against such ridiculousness. Because the baby is not only a baby when when he or she comes out of the womb, but is a baby, it is a is a baby or person, um, regardless if he or she's in the womb or not. Um, so it's extremely important that we consider these things, and I really want to show this cross-examination because I really want the Christian world to realize and see what's going on and how we can engage these issues in a manner that's glorifying to the Lord Jesus Christ and defeats the arguments of those who, <clears throat> who, um, who are pro-choice. Um, and, you know, we have to be able to deal with this. You know, once again, I refer to the term of being an abolitionist, you know, somebody who wants to eradicate abortion in totality, um, in totality, uh, uh, depending, not totality in the sense that if a, if a baby begins to develop in a fallopian tube, but any abortion that is just something out of, uh, uh, something out of convenience, because some woman lay with some dude and dude is the pressure on her to get an abortion or she don't she wants or she wants to go to college or something and she don't want the baby impeding on her, her career or her educational career. Those type of abortions need to be totally abolished. No woman from that perspective should not be allowed to get an abortion at all. It should be outlawed. It should be a felony and you should go to jail for murder in that case. You know, and once again, I just, I, in, in closing this show up, I want to emphasize that I'm not here telling women this out of the sense of me being some kind of chauvinistic, you know, or some kind of, I, you know, some idea that, oh man, you just want women to be, a, you know, not have the rights, you know, nah, I just, I care about you. And I feel that sometimes you make these, you might make a decision. Somebody who might be contemplating abortion, you're gonna make a decision based on pressure from your the guy who got you pregnant, or some family, or you might be making a decision based off you know you have, you feel like you're hopeless. And I'm here to tell you that I care for you, and the Christian community cares for you. So when we're arguing for the abolishment of abortion. It's not this idea that we don't care for you. The fact is that we do care for you, and we want you to reconsider that. We want your heart filled with the joy of Christ so that you understand the value of the baby that's in your womb. Um, and just take that into consideration. You know, just take that into consideration and realize that we love you and we care for you. And um, to not fall to the whims of this world and the pressures of this world. Um, so what is the gospel truth? The gospel truth is the salvific work that Christ did on the cross and the death and burial, birth, birth and death, burial, and resurrection. I had a hard time getting that one out. And Christ, in so dying for the world, he gave those who are to the elect the ability to be saved. He's saving those who need to be saved. And it is... A wonderful gift that God has given those whom he has chosen before the foundation of the world to be saved. Do I know who they are? I don't know. That's why you preach the gospel. Whoever the gospel positively affects, those are the elect. But that is the gospel truth. It is the idea that Christ died on the cross. The redemptive blood of Christ shed on the cross. He died, was buried, resurrected on the third day. To give salvation to many, to nations across the world, all nations. So it is our job as believers to preach that same gospel to those who need to hear it. So that's what I'm doing here, preaching that gospel to you, whoever's listening, who may watch it after after live the live broadcast ends. It is a goal to preach the gospel. So, with that being said, I'd like to thank you for joining me, and may God bless you, and may God keep you. And once again, if you have time, go to my YouTube page, The Gospel of Truth, Martin Wilson. 
and subscribe there because I will be uploading these videos as I, after I edit them. I will be uploading them to YouTube so you can go back through them if you choose to. And also like and follow my Facebook page. Okay? Like and follow my Facebook page. And with that said, I will be having the next showing will be probably on, I'm going to try to get one in later this week. I will announce it on Facebook. Um, also, I will be having on March 2nd, I will be having One Accord Ministry coming on with me. We'll be talking about racial divide and political divide within the body of church, with the body of Christ within the church. And then I will be having Mike Lacona, March 6th. We'll be talking about the evidence for the resurrection. And then I will be having Andrew Rappaport coming on. And we'll be talking about religious pluralism. And I will have Joel McDermott coming on. And we'll be having a, 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 a wild discussion. We'll talk about several different things. Hopefully we can get everything in. And we'll be talking about social justice, I'm sure. Socialism versus God. We'll be talking about uh, slavery in America. And we'll be talking about, probably hopefully get a little bit of theonomy. You know, uh, I want to talk about that with him. But anyway, I pray that God will bless you. And that God will keep you. Once again, thank you for joining, joining me. And once again, follow, like, subscribe, cut the notification bells on so you know when I go live. Take care and God bless. Hey.